understand some of the very basic and simple separation techniques so we would start with the very first technique and that is the technique of sedimentation so let's try it i have certain particles and water i just stir them and i leave this glass for a while as you can see you would find these sediments settling towards the bottom and this indicates that there has been a process of sedimentation so as you can see here the particles have settled towards the bottom most corner and on the top we have the water clear which is remaining now if i say how do we separate this so the concept is simple the things which are insoluble will move towards the bottom the things which are soluble will dissolve so for example if i pour salt into it the salt would dissolve and it would become a clear water so to separate that salt from water we need to have a separate process that we would understand in a while but here what we are separating is a insoluble substance with the soluble substance and therefore the process of separation is very very simple simply put i can say if i am trying to separate solids from liquids this would be one of the good methods because the solids would settle down and the liquids would float and this would be considered as a sedimentation process so we have a simple demonstration for he you here we have a beaker that is filled with muddy water now what i do in this muddy water is i stir it leave it aside for a while so you would see the result something similar to what we have here and the mud settles towards the bottom the clear water moves on the top and this shows a process of sedimentation here what is a sediment and what is a supernatant sediment is what that has settled towards the bottom supernatant is the clear liquid which you can see above and that makes the process of sedimentation don't stop here the process of sedimentation we have understood but let's carry forward the same example and we can understand the process of decantation how once we have separated the two things based on the solubility what i can do is i can simply take and pour the clear water in another funnel another beaker and this would have the clear water with me and all the sediments would remain here i can have further more of course but this is how we can have the process of decantation so you have the muddy water and the water that was obtained from the process of sedimentation as you can see here now what i do is i take this beaker and pour it so all the water comes up here and the mud is left behind or the insoluble impurities are left behind this should occur without disturbing the water if i disturb it if i shake it then you would have the in, the insoluble sol, uh, substances that would also be seen here so it's very important that the consistency of the sedimentation that has occurred should not be disturbed if i am shaking this water if i am dissolving it again definitely you can see the soluble insoluble gets mixed and therefore once you pour it the decantation process would not occur so for decantation process to occur this is very very important that you take this and let it settle once it settles separate out the liquid and this makes the process very very simpler so you can see the sediment remains behind the clear water is obtained separately now we have another good method this is a method of filtration to do this method we have a wattman paper here this is a paper that we use in chemistry lab now this is a unique kind of filter paper usually circular in shape and can be folded how it can be folded into a funnel could look problematic but is actually very simple i just put a single fold here and i put another fold here now i take three of the sides on one side and i create this of the size of funnel and i put it within the funnel now what i have is the remaining water that water which had the impurities with me and once we have the impurities here what i can do is i can pour this water again here and you would have 
the impurities that would be left behind in the filtration paper and the remaining water that would basically move out of the filter paper so you would have the the sediments that would remain behind in the filter paper as you can see and this is the process of filtration so what men uh, filter paper is one of the filter papers that you use and we need to understand the process of sieving and filtration so what is actually a difference between sieving and filter paper filter paper is a multi layer woven structure so the mesh has multiple layers however when we say sieving as we had done uh, sieving you have just a single layer of mesh so you can separate even bigger grains and smaller grains as we do in most of the food items also sieving we need to understand that i repeat again sieving is a single layered mesh however filter paper is a multi layered mesh that means smaller finer impurities can pass through the filter paper easily so that is one of the major differences now what comes below the clear water that we see is the filtrate and the the thing that is remaining on the filter paper is the solid residue so we understand what is a solid residue what is a filtrate the filtrate is one that filters the clear liquid as we had seen and the solid that remains on the filter paper what is the watman paper which we used here is the residue so the terminology again very important in sedimentation we use two terminologies sediment and supernatant supernatant is a clear liquid sediment is what settles below in filtration it is the filtrate which is the clear liquid residue is what remains on the filter paper now have you wondered in our day to day life we have lots of things that use filtration what those could be simple if you are traveling in one of the trains one of the aeroplanes you might see air conditioners then in the houses you see vacuum cleaners air purifiers all of those have the process of filtration and they are designed to filter the dust and this is how filtration occurs the next is evaporation of course you might be wondering why there is a candle burning since long so here we have the process of evaporation i have a clear water with me in this bowl and below this is a candle so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to heat this water and when i'm heating as you can see the little of vapors that can come out of it and this is what is the evaporation process now evaporation process important to note can occur even below the boiling point so the water here need not to reach 100 degree celsius in order to start the vapors it can occur below the boiling point also as the heating increases the rate of evaporation increases so probably you might wonder why we started this in the beginning of the class we could have started it now but the idea is just go back and rewind the video see the amount of vapor is coming then and amount of vapor is coming now you would find the difference that point we just started we just flamed it we just ignited it so the amount of vapors were less but since it has been burning for long now the amount of vapors have started to increase so we need to understand that as you started as you heated with heating the rate of evaporation increases and you can see the water is now changing into vapors by this method we can separate salt from a salt solution so all the water would evaporate and the salt would remain behind and that's how definitely salt is manufactured the same salt that we consume in our day to day food items this is one of the common ways to separate homogeneous mixtures so far what we were doing was a way to separate heterogeneous mixtures where the two mixtures are uh, do not dissolve exactly but here since two, two of the mixtures are homogenized are into one form we can easily separate those so evaporation is one of the ways now let's consider another interesting case here 
rather than having a salt solution i have a sugar solution with me i keep on burning this probably we could have done it if this class would have been long and we could have seen what happened after the class so what would happen when it is a sugar solution when this is a sugar solution and i have a sugar powder here water would start to evaporate this crystallization process is also known as controlled evaporation many of you would be fond of having sugar in tea sugar in milk or a uh, sweet dish so where does this sugar come from and how is it produced the sugar is produced through the process of crystallization the formation is pretty simple the the solution is first heated now when it is heated as the rate of evaporation increases when the little is left the heated solution is allowed to evaporate slowly now at a later stage when the rate of evaporation would reduce because it is heated slowly what would happen the powdered sugar would start to form crystals so let's have another demonstration here we have a burner with a beaker and a su sugar solution what i do is i have the sugar powder i add the sugar powder to it and then once it is heated it is starts to evaporate and crystallized sugar is seen also many of the ways of generation of drugs in pharma industry uh use this method of crystallization so crystallization is another important method that we commonly use the next interesting method that we would understand is magnetic separation so we have different articles here uh i have a eraser i have a sharpener a sharpener and then i have two nails two iron nails which are here and i have a magnet with me what i do is i bring this close to the rubber as i bring it close to the rubber as you can see nothing happens the rubber is not lifted with this magnet but in the same plate if i have sorry it does not separate well okay so if i have this iron nail and i bring this magnet close to it you can see that the iron nail is uh, this iron nail is attracted by the magnet and this is the process of magnetic separation so let's say if you want to separate sulfur from iron any magnetic substance from a non magnetic substance so again a simple demonstration here we have a magnet with certain items let's say wrench plastic spoon nail paper clip a wooden block and a eraser which of the following items do you think would attach to the magnet or get attracted towards the magnet let's understand this one by one so we have wrench definitely it moved and attracted towards the magnet the paper clip definitely and then we also have the nail we right now have the demonstration for the same so what is left behind eraser wood wooden piece and the plastic spoon so these are non magnetic in nature so this was another example to demonstrate it the next way that we need to understand is the process of sublimation now sublimation simply means a state where the solid is converted directly into gaseous form good examples camphor commonly used in most of the religious places uh, you have ammonium chloride as another good example now what would happen here we would have a simple experiment to understand this further but the idea is uh, all of these things sublimate that means they change their state directly from the solid to the gas so what would happen if i want to sep separate ammonium chloride from let's say sand i can have the process of sublimation i can mix these two together in a simple solution now once i mix these two together the vapor would start to come consider this to be a solution where there is a sand and an ammonium chloride the vapor is starting to come now what i do is i put a petri dish or a kind of funnel on the top of it i keep it for a longer duration of time after some time you would see that my hand gets little wet now this indicates that what has sublimed is the ammonium chloride and this is the way that if i am having this for a longer duration of time what would happen you would see small water drops that would come on the surface and when i want to remove it probably i can tilt it and i can have a beaker here where all this 
can be collected. This is not a real way under which you conduct the experiment, but yes, to give you a rough estimate, this should work. So the idea is you have a, a container where ammonium chloride with sand is there. Now, since ammonium chloride is sub, uh, sublime, it moves from a solid state to gaseous state. With heating, the rate would further increase. So the ammonium chloride would start to move uh, in the vapor form. When this vapor comes on to a other surface, this could be a funnel, this could be an inverted beaker, something like that. It would start to form the droplets on the surface. And these droplets, as you can see in the figure here that we have explained, would be collected separately and we can separate the two solutions and this is how the process of sublimation works so these were some of the basic principles and processes where homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures can be separ uh, separated the various ways under which they can be actually separated let's understand the method i have four different items with me in the hand now two of them are lemons two of them are plums i mix all of them so probably this is the mixture or the combination that you can see so in one hand i have a lemon and a plum and in the other hand also i have a lemon and a plum now when i'm hand picking definitely if i want to have a lemon water today what i need to do is separate out the lemons from the plums so i would remove all the plums and i would have only the lemons with me and this is what we call as a very simple method that we have done right now and this is hand picking now in hand picking we usually separate two similar items now it can be lemon plum it can be lemon orange small oranges probably apples or pomegranates but when do we commonly use it we commonly use it in our day-to-day -day life let's say you went to a shop you bought certain pulses with you within the pulses there were some stones so next round that you are cooking you need to separate the pulses from the stones and this can be done by picking through hand so this is a very simple method of hand picking moving on next we have another different method but for this you probably cannot have a visit in the real world you need to be in your countryside area cannot be at your home probably if you are watching one of the videos you can get an insight to it but yes if you are in the countryside area you are in one of the agricultural belts you would see this as a common phenomena and this occurs as threshing so when the grains are separated from the stalks this process is known as threshing and this is usually done during the months where harvesting is done now the harvesting season is again separate for each of the crops so you would see probably uh, the threshing methods that are commonly seen in the countryside regions or the agricultural bills so this was the second method Coming on next, we have another important method and this method is a method that we can probably try here. So let's have a quick uh, example to try it. Now I have certain peanuts with me and with these peanuts I am trying to uh, separate these are roasted peanuts, so I am trying to separate their covers probably. Now as you can see we have just mashed those and what we can see is the cover of the peanut being separated from the peanuts so what we can do is i can simply bring them together and probably so as you can see most of the peanuts covers or are separated from it so heavy items are separated from light items and this method is known as winnowing so when the grains are collected and the uh, grains uh, or the husk and the shaft as we call it can be separated we call this method as winnowing so the simple principle is the heavier items would remain back uh, and the lighter items would flow to a distant so when you are just doing it with a bigger broad uh, equipment we could say for winnowing what would happen the heavier grains would fall exactly below you as you can see in the diagram here and the lighter ones would fa fall apart or a little away from the 
heavier ones and this way you can separate both of those so this is what is known as winnowing the next method that we understand is again a very simple experiment and this experiment is what is known as sieving so what we have here for you is again a simple demonstration so we have a sieving uh, a plate where we could have the things separated i have certain beans here and certain mustard seeds here so what i do if you can visualize here i'll just hold it up i'll pour the bigger seeds nothing came down but what would happen when i have the smaller seeds you would see all the smaller seeds have come down and this demonstrates that we can separate larger items from smaller items just because there is this net and this is through the help of this net we can understand the process of sieving so this is again a very important method of separating grains the bigger components are retained back however the smaller components just move down and with this process we understand what is sieving usually at the construction sites you have seen people separating the sand and the bigger and the smaller sand the finer sand can be separated by this method of sieving so not just just in the agriculture or in your food industry you see sieving as one of the methods but this is commonly visualized even at the construction sites so uh, this was a broad difference between sieving winnowing threshing and hand picking